So the second one is kind of related to the first one. Uh, and this one is about hot plug. Uh, in general, I mean, uh, ACPI-based hot plug of things like devices, CPUs, memory, stuff, whatever you can uh, imagine. So ACPI has a mechanism for signaling hot plug events for every kind of device that has a representation in the ACPI namespace. And that may be even the thermal zone and things like that. And um, yeah, so how it works is uh, there are uh, device object notifications. And for hot plug specifically, we have bus check, device check, and eject. And the, new, uh, the latest version of the spec adds uh, uh, something that is called device check uh, light. Which is, which is a lightweight version of device check. We don't handle it, but we should, I think. So we need to add, a, add support for that, although I, I haven't seen anything using it in the, in, the, in the field yet, but I guess it has been added for a reason, so uh, yeah. So bus check, device check, and eject, and obviously eject is, is, a, is a request for, ad, for ejecting a device, and uh, Device check is, uh, is a notification that the device either has appeared or has gone. So we should just add it or remove it from, uh, from our structures. And bus check is, uh, is, is a notification uh, to rescan the bus from a given point. So we should, if we get a bus check, we should just rescan everything below that device object. Okay, so there are, there are things that we can get from the BIOS, and, uh, and that can be generated for, for, for every device that has a representation in the CPI namespace. And the handling of that may depend on the device type. And uh, for, for example, PCI is special here because PCI uh, needs, it's like this. We need to, uh, Rescan PCI bus, I mean, config spaces of devices, and then uh, discover what's changed, and then uh, do the same in the ICPI namespace. So for PCI, it is uh, two steps. Like we first scan the ICPI namespace from the given point, and then we scan the ICPI bus uh, just directly. And that's, that makes it different from other types of devices because, for example, for memory, we don't have to do this, the second scan. We only need to scan the, uh, the ACPI namespace. And for CPUs, and, uh, it's the same as for memory. Other types of devices may, may require different things. But, however, however, uh, the basic algorithms are, are, are very similar for each case because what we, if, if there's a bus check, we just need to rescan the bus, and, uh, and that may be, may involve, that always involves rescanning the CPI namespace, but, and it may involve rescanning the physical bus as well, but it's, we, we need to rescan the bus. Again, if, if there's a device check, we should check if the device has gone or has appeared, and if there's, there's eject, then that's easy, right? That's an easy case. But again, it's very similar to for everything, like for PCI, for CPU, and so on. Eject is eject. Uh, also, what happens is that in ACPI, uh, the, since the, there is the namespace, and devices have children, and devices have parents, so if a parent is removed, so we have a device check for a parent and it's gone. This means that all the children below it also are gone at this point. Uh, so it allows us to handle things like packages. Like for example, when you have multiple devices in one package and the whole package is regarded as a device in the, in the ACPI namespace and we can get a device check for the whole package. And it means that everything under that package device is gone at this point or has appeared at this point. So this makes it possible to, to handle things like adding CPU packages along with memory, PCI, house bridges, and things like that. 
But for that, we need to have a common code for handling PCI, ACPI, uh, hot plug, just for any kind of device because um, it has to cross uh, bus, type, bus type boundaries, for example. So we may start at some kind of a generic container, then go to, to CPUs, memories, uh, PCI house bridge, and, and the PCI bus under it. And then to USB, for example, from there, uh, to, to, to make it more complicated even. So yeah, for now we just uh, register notifiers for all of those object notifications uh, for devices that we kind of expect to get notifications for which is not really, uh, well, just say robust, because we can get a notification for any devices, even, even for those that we don't expect to get notifications for. And that's happened in the past. So we, uh, we, there are cases in which we didn't expect to get notifications for certain devices, but the BIOS actually generated notifications for those, and, they, and for a reason. And we didn't handle them because we didn't expect them to appear, but, and, and things didn't work. So actually, we, for now, for example, we uh, register uh, notifiers for, for device object notifications for all PCI devices that have a CPI representation. That's kind of wasteful because, uh, you know, we, we need a little, a small data structure for every PCI device, which is addition, in addition to, to the struct PCI device and, and the ACPI object and so on and so on. And uh, it would be more, um, it would make sense, as I write, wrote in the slide, it would make sense to have one uh, one notify handler and uh, that will work for all devices in the same way. Only uh, with differences taken into account by some callbacks, for example. So we'll have a single hot plug notify handler for all and there, there will be callbacks for PCI devices in it, for example, so that it can just execute this PCI specific code from there. And I would, because, and the reasons are, are given here. So we have some duplicated code over this subsystem right now still. Uh, for example, the PCI host bridge hot plug duplicates some code that is already in the, PC, in the ACPI core. So we could easily merge those things. Also, PCI, uh, ACPI PHP duplicates the same code, so we can just merge this again. Uh, we can get rid of some data structures that we use right now, but not necessarily. And, uh, uh, and, we, and then, if, if there's one handler for everything, then we don't have the problem with choosing the devices that we, that we register the handler for, right? Uh, yeah, and that's another reason is that if we have a scan, if we have a bus check notify for a, for a device very high on, in the hierarchy, then we need to just scan everything uh, top down from there, and that may just cross bus, ch bus type boundaries, and we need to handle that somehow anyway. Uh, and there's another reason, which is the EJD thing, and that's very interesting because EJD is something that tells uh, about dependencies between devices as far as hot plug is concerned, and then those dependencies may be, uh, out, may be outside of the hierarchy. So that device may depend on some other device here. So if that device is gone, then that device is gone as well, and everything on just below it. Right, and, and again, if this device appears, then that device will appear again and everything below it. And that's, that's adding one more level of complexity to all that. And um, we handle it for uh, dock stations currently, uh, but there's nothing in the spec that says 
the, the dock stations are the only kind of device that, that may have uh, those kinds of dependence. So usually if we have a dock station and there are some other devices that depend on it, then those devices have the EJD method defined. And they depend on the dock station. But uh, it, the spec doesn't say that you can only depend on the dock station. You can depend on anything. So we should handle that generically and again. If we have a common infrastructure for, uh, for handling uh, ACPI hot plug, then we can possibly implement that. All right, so currently the common handling is implemented for CPUs and memory and the containers, I mean generic containers. Um, Dock stations are a special case, and uh, PCI hot bridge, host bridge is a special case, and PCI in general is another special case. And I would like to just merge those, to eliminate those special cases and make them uh, parts of, uh, of, a, of, of a generic or general um, uh, code that handles ACPI hot plug events. So when you cross cross it kind of works because of the way the uh, for PCI because of the way the PCI uh, host bridge uh, is implemented. I mean the PCI host bridge, host bridge enumeration. Because if we get uh, uh, so it goes like this: we do a, we get a bus check for for an object here, and we do an ACPI bus scan for everything below it, and that involves have a calling the ACPI scan handler for host bridges, and that's scan handler actually does the scan of the whole, whole PCI bus below the, the house bridge. So it is kind of covered and, and it should work in principle, but that's because the scan handler is implemented this way for, for the house bridge. It is not a generic mechanism, it's a special case. But it could be done for other types of, for other bus types analogously, I think. Although it's quite a bit of work, I think. I think also. So, so if you had, for example, I don't know if this even exists, but a non-PCI USB adapter, would there be a way of reusing, right? Yeah. If there's, yeah, yeah, there will. Uh, it all depends on how it, you know, because it's like we have those devices that I was talking about at the beginning, where the, they are not enumerable natively, and they are not USB controllers, but they are SPI controllers and I2C controllers and things like that. And if we, in theor I mean, theoretically, if we get a, if we do a best scan and one of those devices appeared and we create a platform device for, for, for that thing, and the driver that binds to that platform device should scan a bus below it. Because that's a controller driver, and it should scan the bus below that thing. So it should always also work. But I think EJD handling would be interesting. Unfortunately, I don't have any hardware to test it. <laughs> because. <laughs> so, yeah. Because that's, that has to be implemented in the BIOS, actually, so, so we can test it. So, so that's. Or I will create a uh, virtual machine with <laughs> things like that. QMU, yeah. We have fake bias that we have those things. So. But. Uh, 
uh, yeah, if they can if they can find something like that, I don't know. But you know, it's like I haven't seen a lot of things using EJD except for dock stations. So there's probably a good reason why we don't support it still. But well, we I'm afraid that in the future we might have some you know big iron systems where there are multiple things, removable things, and they may depend on each other in, <laughs> indirectly, let's just say, right? <laughs> and that's, that's a good way to, to represent those dependencies. Well, we have that in your SOC, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but the SOC is, is you know, is, is a whole. Uh, you, you can't just split it into pieces. <laughs> but, but in a big, in a big system, you, you can have multiple boards that, and, um, and the, the, some dependencies, like when you remove this, you have to remove that for some reason. Because they share some power, power rails or something like that, right? OK. Any thoughts, questions, suggestions? No. OK. So.